So the first thing you will need to do is remove the housing. Since I had already disassembled everything in the previous video, I will go ahead and start removing all the components and setting them aside. Next, we will be removing the reset button and the power switch that are located on the upper shelf. You can do this by pinching both sides and pushing the pieces outward, and then pulling them from the other side. Repeat the same process for the power switch. We will now have to remove the plastic that allows the cartridges to slide in. Flip the board over and remove the Phillips screws located on each side. Once removed, we can then go ahead and remove the two pieces of spring-loaded flaps. We can then go back to the base shell and remove the two metals and the LED cover. Now that all the components have been removed, the next step will be to get everything cleaned out. You will need a container with some warm water as well as some dish soap. We will now just simply get all the components we removed and brush them gently. Be sure not to use very abrasive brushes as you do not want to scratch the plastic. I use a set of some fairly cheap car detailing brushes that you can find on Amazon. What I like to do next is put all my components in a separate container so I can go ahead and rinse them out under regular water. Now that everything is rinsed, I will move them to a place so they can dry out. I like to place everything on a towel, but I also use a microfiber cloth to help speed up the process. While we wait for everything to dry out, I will move on to the motherboard to give it a nice clean. I will be using 99% isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. We want to start by removing the cartridge reader. You can simply do this by pulling it straight up. You don't need a lot of force as it comes out fairly easy. Next, we will use our 99% alcohol and toothbrush to start cleaning out the circuit board. Be sure to work this in small areas. Depending on how dirty the board is, it may require multiple passes to ensure everything is cleaned out. You can use cotton swabs to remove excess gunk and help speed up the process, but be careful not to brush too hard so you don't damage any of the components located on the board.
Also, be sure to clean out the controller ports, as they tend to get dirty and build up gunk over the years. Replace the cartridge reader by lining up the arrow on the reader with the arrow on the board. At this time, everything should be dried and ready to be put back together. We'll start with the base by putting the two metal pieces and the LED cap back together. Be sure to have the cutout facing upward. We now put on the base shielding. followed by the motherboard. In order to put the AV casing, you will need to lift the motherboard up a bit and slide it through the cutout of the AV casing. Next, you will place the heat sinks and also be sure to line them up as straight as possible. Place the motherboard shielding on top and also be sure to check that the holes from the heatsink line up as they will be screwed in later. Line up the heatsink over the holes, followed by the jipper pack shielding, as well as all the other thinner pieces of shielding required to fasten everything together. Next, we will use the size 2 Phillips screwdriver to screw in everything in place. We will start with the 10 screws first located on the heat shield. You will then locate the screws with the washers and place them here and here. The black screws will go into these two holes. The four silver screws will go in the back where the power and the video are located. The thick longer screws will go here. The next six screws will go in the following locations, here, here, and here. You will need a size 0 Phillips screwdriver to get the last two screws located on the sides of the jumper pack. We will now be putting back the plastic flaps onto the underside of the upper cover. Be sure to put the small side of the spring pressed up against the plastic. Place the flap onto the proper slot. Don't worry about putting them in the wrong location as they are both different sizes. We will repeat the process for the second flap. Put the cartridge cover back by matching the cutout with the indentation located on the shell and screw them in using a size 2 Phillips screwdriver. Flip it over and double check that everything looks good. What I'd like to do next is use this product to clean and restore the plastic inside where the power switch and the reset button go. I take a cotton swab and put a very small amount and work it into the area. I repeat the same process for the reset button and the power switch. We can now go ahead and place the reset button and the power switch by slightly pressing on the sides and pushing them back into their original location. I will now remove this permanent marker writing using 99% isopropyl alcohol and using paper towels. I will go ahead and use the plastic restorer from earlier and place a small amount onto a microfiber towel 
to work it all around the system to give it a nice darker finish. I like to give it a second pass using a dry part of the towel to give it a less greasy look. We will now repeat the process using the same restorer for the bottom. Put the top housing back into place. You will need a 4.5mm security bit to screw everything back into place. Be sure not to forget to put the plastic feet onto the system before screwing them in. Once everything is fastened into place, we will go ahead and test that everything is working fine. Nice, and everything is looking good. Be sure to drop a like if you like this type of content or leave a comment below for more content that you would like to see.